Here I have a CSV file that has two columns. Column A, some numbers, IDs. Column B, some words. And I want to import these into an existing Teradata table. Now let's open Teradata Studio. Here I have a database called new fast load. Um, the name of it doesn't matter, of course. And then the name of the table is fast load. I've created a simple table with ID and word. And now let's see what we have in it. Select everything from the table name. Currently it's empty. Now we want to load that file into it. So I right click on the table name, data, load data. And it says, do you want to go to the data transfer perspective, which is the other tab? And I say, yes, we have that. Um, now I choose the source type instead of being Teradata from another table. I say an external file. And you can see that in parentheses, it says fast load because that is the utility it uses. So we don't really notice that, but that's how it's gonna load the file into our uh, database. So then this load data wizard comes up and now we simply choose our file. And our file was words, I'm gonna open that. And that's it. There is no need to change anything here. Column labels in first row doesn't need to be checked because I don't have a column header in my file. And uh, co um, column delimiter is comma. So I'm going to just say finish. And it's done. So now if I go back to my query development and run the same command, now you can see that those 20 um, rows are inserted. As simple as that. Fastload can be used with a graphical user interface like Teradata Studio, like we saw, or with the Fastload utility. The Fastload utility needs to be downloaded uh, from Teradata Tools and Utilities, and once you have the utility, similar to having BTEC or other um, load and unload utilities, then you can use Fastload in a batch mode, you can write a script which would look like a file like this and uh, you will have commands in your script file. For example, you need to log on to your database providing the username and password, begin loading into your table name and uh, your table has to be an empty table and it can only be one, that's what fastload does. And then providing error files, job parameters, you can provide parameters like checkpoint, which is in the case of failure. And uh, if, if your job fails, your uh, job can resume from the last checkpoint. Also error limit, for example, you can provide a error limit of five. That means when five errors happen, the job would fail. Then you can give your SQL commands, for example, any DDLs. Then file, which is the file that you're actually loading into your empty table, and the other SQL commands, and you end the loading and you log off from the database. Once you have that script file, then you will run a command like this, fast load, smaller than, and then the script file name, which is the file we have here. And that would do the same thing we saw with using the GUI. But this can be repeated because you can use it in a batch mode. All right, but why to use fast load? Why can we use simple SQL? For example, insert into this table. Well, we can use that, but imagine if we have uh, 20,000 rows. It would be so much more difficult to use insert statements. I also did an experiment to see how long it would take to insert 20,000 rows um, which are very simple rows, just one number and one word. It took me 25 minutes with an enterprise size Teradata database. With fast load, only three seconds. The parallel processing behind the scenes does the magic. Uh, when you, in, when you use fast load, the architecture of Teradata kicks in and uh, spreads the work among multiple nodes and everything happens way, way faster. When you do the insert into 
com uh, statements, there is no parallel processing. You're not benefiting from that. Each statement is an individual statement. And that is the power of parallel processing. You can also check out my full Teradata SQL course on Udemy. The link is listed below in the descriptions. Thank you for watching.